Hey traders from all over the world, this is Jeremy Alexander Newsom, CEO of Real Life Trading. I do hope you're doing absolutely sensational today. I wanted to make a video upon request from some of our students. And this video really comes to uh, the idea of what is exactly a gap. Now I know that's kind of a vague question, but the interesting thing is there are so many schools of thought out there and there are so many different variables and so many different names and so many different, I guess you would call it correlations or descriptions or calculations or rankings that it really comes down to what really is a gap. You know, when there's so many different names, what do you call it? And in reality, and at some point this is my opinion, but in reality, a gap in a stock price is very, very important. It's probably the one of the most important pieces of price action that a technical trader can see because even fundamental traders are going to recognize a gap, right? You know, technical traders, maybe we're saying, oh, that's a hammer or that's a morning star reversal and fundamental traders don't care. But at a gap, a gap scares people. A gap will make someone frightened or make someone very, very happy. And that is a very interesting point. And in gaps, and how you rank them or how you classify them or what they mean, it all comes down to the sentiment of the gap. So here's what I'm trying to say is this is purely my opinion. I don't necessarily think that all the gap measurements out there, all the gap classif classifications are specifically correct or incorrect. What I am saying is there's a lot of confusion out there and I hope this video kind of clears it up because in my opinion, with all the years that I've done and my research and my own personal trading, I found two pretty conclusive things in regards to technical trading. And that is, it either works or it doesn't work. And that really is about it. And if it does work, right? If it does work, we want to work as well as it can for as long as we can so we can make as much money as we can off the particular trade. If it doesn't work, we want to be able to get out of the trade and mitigate our losses and protect our account, protect our capital, so we can move on to the next trade. And in regards to gaps, the reason that they're so interesting is because they scare people. So in my personal opinion, there are only two main types of gaps. The two main types of gaps, the two main types of gaps are retest gaps and gap and goes. Now here's what's interesting. Why do I call them this? Well, this is probably the most no brainer of the two. This one, uh, gap and goes, I mean, I have heard this being called so many different things. And again, I'm not here to say that this is right. I'm not here to say I'm right and other people are wrong. What I am here to say is if you can understand the sentiment of the gap, you could really call it the mashed potato dance. It doesn't matter what the name is specifically. What matters is if you can understand why it's a good gap, why it might not be a good gap, and of course how to trade it so that you will either be right or you will be wrong or you'll make some money or you'll protect and mitigate your risk and continue about your day. So again, this could be called the retest gap or the fried shrimp from Banana Republic. I mean, it doesn't really matter what we call it. But what matters is the sentiment. So this was my trading plan on CMG from yesterday uh, before earnings came out. And I called for a small gap down. This is a pretty small gap down. I didn't think it was gonna be that. It's actually bigger than I thought, but um, you know, there you go. So my plan was if we open below 695, bearish gap and go. I don't know why these two zeros are there, but Anyway, bearish gap and go. And if we open above 729, bullish retest gap. So let's explain what that means. And let's talk a little bit about it. On Chipotle, which was a very, very popular, popular gap today, is two facts. Fact number one, if you bought above this particular price at some point in January 2015, you are now losing money. That is fact number one. Fact number two is if you bought yesterday, you most certainly are losing money. Those are the two facts. So on a gap, the most important question that you can ask yourself is this question. How would you feel if you were in the trade before the gap happened. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in trading, regardless if you do technical trading or fundamental trading or day trading or forex trading, it doesn't really matter what you do. The question becomes, how would you feel if you were in the trade before the gap happened? Because if you feel a certain way, other people will likely feel a certain way. Because the fact of the matter is, most people are emotional when it comes to trading, when it comes to money. And there's no real way around that. There's a few things that we can do and there's a few things that we can um, condition ourselves not to be emotional regarding money. And those are the professional day traders, the professional real life traders, if you will, that at some point become very conditioned to not react emotionally. But 90% of traders or approximately 90% of traders who trade the equity markets, they are emotional. I'll give you an example. Let's say on Chipotle, a guy named Bob buys in on this day. His name is Bob. And Bob goes to bed that night dreaming and thinking about how much money he's going to make on Chipotle once it goes up on earnings. He gets into Chipotle and he thinks about, oh my gosh, I just went to Chipotle the other day. I bought an $8.95 burrito. It was pretty delicious. And there were 45 people in that restaurant. There were seven people in front of me, seven people behind me. And it's like that every single day. This company has just been on a tear. It's been going up and up and up and up and up. And I just know that they're going to do very, very well in earnings. So I am going to buy some shares. So he buys some shares or he gets into the position bullish. And ladies and gentlemen, he goes to sleep at night and he has a dream that he's gonna make $7,000 on this trade and he's thinking about what he can do with that $7,000 and he starts getting very, very, very optimistic and there's a lot of emotion tied to this trade. And again, the fact of the matter is, you know, that's what most people do. That's not a bad thing necessarily. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think if you should get into a trade, the only thing you should care about is, A, did you write the trade down meaning did you plan it? Did you want to be in this trade before you got into it? And B, do you have your stop and your protection in place and are you going to follow through? As a real professional trader, a real life trader, I think that's what you should focus on. But let's just say Bob you know, has this feeling, this emotion tied to this trade. How does he feel when the stock gaps down? Well, he feels sad. He feels like he's going to lose on the trade. And he's losing on the trade. Now he's down money. And so now instead of making money, he's losing money. He's going to get upset. And what is he likely going to do? He's likely going to sell and run away with his tails between his legs. He's going to be upset. That's usually what happens. This is what I refer to as a gap and go. A gap and go is a trade that when the stock well, I should say, uh, when the prior candle is white and the stock gaps down, it is a gap and go. Simple as that. It really is that simple. If you have a white candle and the stock gaps down, it's a gap and go, meaning that this gap is pretty strong. And what it really means, truth be told, is that anywhere, anyone in this general area is trapped. They are losing money. And that's why you'll hear me use this term often in my uh, real life stock reviews that this person is trapped. That's what that means. That means that they're trapped. It means that they're losing money. They're upset by it. They don't really have anything else to do. And they're worried about their particular trade. Now, that's what a gap and go is. That's what it's called. However, you can simply say a gap and go is a trade that when the prior candle is white and the stock gaps down, and clears recent support, it is a gap and go. So that's another layer to the gap and go trade. And a support is simply a st where a stock finds more buying pressure than selling pressure. And this is something that technical traders do use, right? You do have to be able to see where a stock finds more buying pressure than selling pressure. So we can visually see that there was obviously some buying pressure at 697 the other, you know, not too long ago. And there was obviously some buying pressure the other day on Chipotle. We know that because there was a long lower shadow on this candle. Long lower shadows always represent buying pressure, like this one. It's just what they, that's just what they represent. Long shadows on the bottom represent buying pressure. Long 
The shadows on the top represent selling pressure. So there are some schools of thought out there. There are some studies that might call this a breakaway gap. I've read that many times. I've heard that many times. I'm not saying that's necessarily incorrect, but it oftentimes confuses people because they're like, okay, it's a breakaway gap, but why? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's why is because everyone up here is trapped. Everyone up here who bought in this pink box is trapped. They're losing money and they are probably going to be selling. Now, even if they're not emotionally tied to this trade, even if they're not scared about this trade, if they got in somewhere in this red area, they probably placed a stop somewhere right about here. More than likely, someone placed the stop below the most recent support. That way, when the stock gapped down, it blew past their stop, therefore they stopped out, therefore causing the stock to sell or causing their position to sell. So that's what a gap and go is. A gap and go is a prior candle is white, the stock gaps down. It really is at some point that simple. But if it clears a recent support, it's at least a stronger gap in general. Okay, so I'll try to give you, um, let's see if I can find a, a weak gap and go. Give me about three seconds and I can find one. Um, well, here's one right there. Let me zoom in just a little bit right there. That's a weak gap and go. I mean, it's not that strong. I actually call this particular candle a new black crow because you did have a white candle and the prior day it did gap down, right? It opened lower than the prior day's close. However, it did not gap down or clear any recent supports. So yeah, sure, it's a strong candle and yes, it can give us an indication that we're more bearish than bullish, right? But it did not specifically gap that far. Now this right here, from this stock to this stock, this stock was a very, very good gap and go. So you have a gap and go that definitely worked one day and then at some point, you know, it started reversing. And usually if you get a gap and go and the stock breaches the high of the candle, uh, the trade is, you know, gonna reverse. It's gonna continue to go bullish more than likely. Because this pattern is so strong, again, as crazy as it sounds, if it doesn't work, it's not gonna work. So it's either going to work or it's not going to work. And if it doesn't work, just learn to flip your perspective and just go the opposite direction. So that's actually kind of easy to do right now with Chipotle. This is going to be a future trade setup. Now, when you guys watch this video, you can see how and if it plays out. But I want to close below this particular price before I go bearish. I want to close below 665.02. That would be my more bearish than bullish entry. And if we close above 687.53, I'd be more bullish than bearish on Chipotle. That's really about it. Now that we have the gap, we can analyze the why. We can understand why it's a strong gap because people who bought are selling either out of fear or because their stops have gotten hit and it's gonna be an automatic sell on their broker side. That's really about it, right? You can call this kind of gap whatever you wanna call it, but it's the why behind why it's powerful. Now a gap and go does not have to be just a bearish gap. It can also be a bullish gap. Now a bullish gap and goes oftentimes are a little bit harder for people to understand because a lot of people don't go short stock. So let me try to explain it the best way I can. So that was a bullish gap and go. So for clarification purposes, let's just put a, this is gonna be a bullish gap and go. It's a trade that when the prior candle is, what color do you think? Prior color is black and the stock gaps up and clears recent resistance, it is a gap and go. So let's talk about why. Well, how are black candles created? Black candles are created from selling pressure. And in the stock market, you can have different forms of selling pressure. You can have selling to close or selling to open. Selling to close is let's say uh, his name is Jim and Jim got in bullish with this double bottom pattern. He got in bullish right here and now he is selling to close his position there, locking in a profit. Okay, good for Jim. However, there's another form of trader out there. Let's call him Steve. And Steve went bearish right there. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is Steve did the opposite of what other people do oftentimes. You see, there's a whole other world out there in the stock market. You have buyers and you have sellers. 
raise your hand in the air just for practice. Hey, if you're listening to the video on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you're finding it, just enlighten me uh, for a moment. Um, raise your hand in the air if you have ever heard the term buy low, sell high. Pretty much all your hands are going in the air. Buy low, sell high. You know that that's a very common, common statement in the stock market. Buy low, sell high. Buy at 10, sell at 20. That's your job as a trader. Buy low, sell high. However, what happens if we flip it around? What happens if we sell high and we buy low? Is that possible? Can that be done? And the answer is yes. See, in the stock market, if you sell something at 620 and you turn around and you buy it at 500, you've made $620, sorry, bad math. You've made $120 per share of profit. And that's what Steve did. Steve sold high at 620 and he bought back at 500. So yes, he sold something that he does not own. If you need help clarification uh, with that concept, please email me at jeremy at reallifetrading.com. I'll be happy to clear it up or you can visit us on the trading floor or post on YouTube or Twitter or whatever, any social network out there that you want. And uh, I'm happy to explain that in more detail. Okay. So bottom line, Steve sold the shares. He sold high buying low. So ladies and gentlemen, if he did the exact same trade once before and made a lot of money doing it, would he do that trade again? Yes or no? And the answer is, yeah, why not? <laughs> why wouldn't he? If he made $120 a share doing it once, and now he has the exact same opportunity to do it again, why wouldn't he? So that's exactly what he does. So Steve begins to get into some bearish positions right here. He begins to sell to open or sell high, buy low. So that's how a bearish trader gets into a position is that they sell to open. And that, the majority of the time, ladies and gentlemen, is what creates black candles, is traders who are selling to open. So if we look at Chipotle, the very next day, boop, boop, gap action. Chipotle had a very, very nice gap up. So if Steve went bearish by selling to open, how do you think he feels the next day when it gapped up? Well, he's probably not too pleased because he's losing money. He's losing money. Not only is he losing money, but in order to exit the trade, he's going to have to... How would he exit? So let me make this green so you guys can understand. This is how he gets into the trade. He sells to open. And when the stock... I'll put it where he did it. So he sold to open... Let's just say it's $600 a share. Then the next day, stock gaps up. He has to exit the trade. How does he do it? He buys to cover. He buys to cover. So if he's buying to cover, boys and girls, legends and legendettes from around the world, is that buying pressure, yes or no? And the answer is yes. It creates buying pressure. If there's a bunch of short traders who are buying a position, it's going to create buying pressure. Now, not only are short traders buying to cover, but also people who see the stock gapping up and they're like, wee, Chipotle is going to the moon. I'm going to buy. They also begin to buy. But not only does specifically Steve buy to cover, but in a gap, the most, imp the most important thing to look at is the prior candle. Boop. There's the most important thing. The most important thing in the gap is the prior candle. So this candle is black. So that is the most important candle because that's the people who are the most recently affected by this gap. They're the ones who went in bearish and they said to themselves, oh my gosh, I'm about to make $620 a share. I can't wait. I know exactly what I'm going to do with the money. I'm going to go to Aruba and drink Mai Tais all day. That's what they start thinking to themselves. So those are the people that are most recently affected. That's why in a gap, the, mo the prior most recent candle is the most important. So if the prior candle is black and the stock gaps up, and if it clears recent resistance, it does gap and go. Ladies and gentlemen, here was recent resistance right here, this little red line. I'll try to draw it straight. 
There you go. That's the best straight line I can muster. I'll try one more time. I'm not an artist. <laughs> All right, there's the resistance. So anyone who went bearish here or here is trapped, losing money, and is forced to buy to cover. And that creates a gap and go. And that, my friends, is opportunity for either day traders or short-term swing traders, right? If you bought in this general area, um, you know, the stock went from approximately 650 to almost $700 a share. So that's at least a potential $40 profit on that particular gap alone on Chipotle, just because you understood the gap. Now notice, as I said earlier, this gap right here was also a bearish gap and go, and it is, but there was one difference in that gap and one of the reasons it didn't work out. Remember that red line I just drew in here a moment ago? Check it out. Sorry, I'm trying to draw straight. I'm just gonna draw a line. I'm gonna have the software do it for me. <laughs> there we go. There's the exact same resistance. What's interesting about that resistance? Well, what's interesting about this particular price at 610 and some change, 607, is this was a resistance here, resistance here, and a support right there. So this gap, ladies and gentlemen, would have been a phenomenal day trade, but it would not have been the best swing trade because the stock was gapping to a support. Old resistance equals new support. So hopefully that kind of clears it up a little bit why that gap didn't specifically work out. And I'm not saying that it couldn't have, but I would definitely say is this gap and go would have given us great opportunities in the day trade. Uh, and every gap does create opportunities. It either creates a day trading opportunity or a swing trading opportunity. And if you're looking for a day trading opportunity, even if it's a gap and go, you're simply understanding that, okay, if it's a gap and go, it's a stronger gap. So I need to pay attention to it. If you are day trading, your main concern is, is it going to be a perfect gap and go? So let me just run through this really quickly because I do talk about this for free, reallifetraining.com. Go to Chipotle, look at the hourly chart. The hourly chart is also white. Go to the 15 minute chart. The prior day 15 minute candle is also white. Go to the five minute chart and notice the five minute chart candle is also white. That means that this trade is a perfect gap and go. In order to trade perfect gap and goes, you look at the one minute chart and you play the two minute low. So again, we talk about this at reallifetrain.com in more, in more detail. This is for my day traders out there uh, who can get an opportunity, uh, but it worked out pretty well. I mean, depending on where you got in and the risk reward ratio um, that you're able to play, here's the one minute chart in the morning. So the two minute on Chipotle was pretty big. You're dealing with $15 candles, so boom, boom, boom. Then it retraced and uh, here's a good opportunity to get in. Boom, boom, entry stop. Uh, that's about two, three times your risk right there. And at that point, you would have switched to a five minute chart after about 10 minutes or so of being in the market. And we can see on Chipotle, even on the five minute, uh, let me back up just a little bit. My charting software is flipping out. Uh, on the five minute chart, you would have had a few good opportunities to day trade uh, Chipotle and your your edge, your bias would have been bearish, right? Here's a pennant right there that broke out bearish. So you could have hopped on that for some bearish uh, positions. Uh, over here, once this uh, support resistance started breaking down, you could have hopped into here for some bearish action. So either way, you would have known today to be a little bit more bearish than bullish based on the gap. So as of now, as far as a swing trade, since we have a high lower shadow and a high upper shadow, it's a totally neutral trade because it is at a support. Watch, look at there, right? Resistance, resistance, support, support. So we are at a location. So I would imagine if we close below 665.02, I'd be more bearish and bullish. So that's the most important thing when it comes to gaps, ladies and gentlemen, the important thing, well, I'll put those back on if I can. I guess I can't. Uh, the most important thing with gaps is again, just understanding the why, understanding who is making money, who is losing money, and does that impact the trade? So let's go, to, let's go talk about retest gaps. Now re, retest gaps are a very special breed of gaps because they uh, require a little bit of patience for both my day traders and my swing traders. So a retest gap, uh, I'm trying to think of the best one, Let's do SM Energy. SM Energy was a beautiful retest the other day. I had a good trader, a good friend of mine, a real life trader, his name is Larry Howe. 
Uh, he's uh, losing Canada and just absolutely destroyed this trade on uh, February 3rd. February 3rd, actually, was probably one of the best day trading days that we've ever had in company history. It was sensational. Most people got six or seven R's that day. But anyway, I'll explain that in just a second. So what is a retest gap? Well, again, here's a trivia question. Trivia question is, what is the most important candle when looking at a gap? Well, the answer is prior candle. Prior candle is the most important candle. So this is a really, really simple, simple explanation. A retest gap is when a, I'm sorry, when the prior candle is white and the stock gaps up. Or when the prior candle is black and the stock gaps down. Simple as that. All right, that's a retest gap. And I will say that 90% of gaps are retest gaps and most of them, most gaps in general, end up being a retest. So what that really means, ladies and gentlemen, is if you ever feel like you're chasing a trade, you are. If you have to ask the question, am I chasing this trade? The answer is within your question. Yes, you're chasing the trade. You need to wait and be patient because everything will, at some point, retest. No matter how big or how small, it will happen. So let's explain the why behind this type of gap. The why is pretty simple. Let's go back to how would you feel if you bought right there? How would you feel on SM Energy if you bought at that particular location? You'd probably feel pretty happy. Why? Well, because you're making money. <laughs> that's, really, that's really about it. You're happy because you're making money. So the trade's gonna go in your direction. Uh, you bought into SM Energy. It unexpectedly gapped up some 10%. So you are making a 10% return on your investment in one day, which is phenomenal. What would you do? Well, most people would sell in this situation. And you're not wrong. It's not wrong. It's just simply what people do, right? Stock gaps up nicely and they sell. So if the stock gaps up, Sometimes it runs a little bit in the morning and then comes the selling pressure, people locking in profits. Boom, 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 boom. People begin selling, locking in profits. And then people who have not bought the stock yet, they say, oh, great, the stock has finally pulled back. It's now at a discount. It's now cheaper than where it was before. So they start buying it, causing the stock to go up. That's what the retest looks like. So on the day trading level on SM yesterday, here was the retest. There was actually two of them. Uh, the one that Larry played, which was just absolutely a Babe Ruth home run, was he waited for the retest for about 35 minutes or so to an hour. He got this hammer candle pattern. He went bullish there, placed a stop there, and that's all she wrote. That was his risk. So at some point during the day, you got this basing pattern, right? You got the resistance. It's just boom, 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 and then break out. There's the breakout. There's another opportunity to get in bullish or add to your position or move up your stop or whatever your plan says to do. And then again, the trade just kind of went gangbusters from there. So that's how you played on the day trade. On the day trade, you wait for the pullback. On the swing trade, same thing. You're going to wait for the pullback. So the question realistically becomes, have we retested? Well, we did retest today. Today, we have a small little inside day candle. So oftentimes with swing trades and with gaps, and this just really kind of comes with practice, is you're gonna to begin to place trades and analyze your trades based on the hourly charts. The hourly charts are gonna become your friend because this helps you kind of sneak in your entries where you want them and where they kind of should be. So if we're looking at SM Energy, I'm gonna hop over here to the uh, 10, 20, and 50 exponential moving averages. Here they are. And you'll see that today we pulled right into the 10 exponential moving average on SM. So my thought plot process and my goal is that right here on the hourly chart, this is a retest gap, right? White candle, gaps up, retest. Here's the retest on the hourly, boom, boom, pennant pattern. There's the breakout and this is the retest of the hourly. Stock pulls back, comes into the 10, and my expectation is for something like this to potentially happen. I'm assuming that's gonna continue higher. 
Meaning today, which was February 4th, was the pullback on SM Energy. Maybe we get one or two more days, maybe even three, but my ultimate perception is that SM does break to the upside. And you guys are more than welcome at this video to see if I'm right. And bottom line, if you're right, you should sign up for the trading floor because we do very well there. <laughs> just a little just a little advertising, that's all. So SM Energy, right? It's at a gap. What type of gap was this? Riddle me that, boys and girls. This type of gap, just a little bit ago, what, what type of gap was that right there? That was a retest gap. Yes, black candle, gaps down, that's a retest. Here's a trick question. Did it clear a pivot point? Did it clear a short-term support resistance? The answer is also yes. Your short-term support was right here in red. And over here, the most recent gap, the one that Larry played, or as I think I'm gonna start calling him Larry the Legend, uh, here is that resistance, and that also cleared that resistance. So he didn't really have anything to worry about until right about here, which is where we're slowing down. So that's why I'm anticipating, based on this gap now, that we're gonna slow down, pound it out, boom, 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 and then maybe break through that moving average and continue to go bullish. Will it happen? Probably, but if it doesn't, no big deal, right? That's what risk mitigation is for. So this really kind of sums up, I mean, here you have this gap and here you have this gap. It doesn't really matter, again, what we call them. What matters is the sentiment behind the gap and you understanding the why. Why would people be making money or be losing money? So let's see if I can predict uh, the future, if you will, on a particular trade. Uh, so this trade has not happened yet, so I'll go ahead and record this so that you guys can kind of get an idea if um, you know if the, my analysis is close to being correct. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Twitter. Now Twitter again hasn't uh, gapped yet. This is before earnings. I think earnings are tonight. So initially we got in bullish down here um, at the $35 short-term support. Before I answer that question though, can you ask, uh, answer me this guys, what type of gap is this right here, this gap down? And in my opinion, it would be a retest gap. The question that you guys need to answer is, did it retest? And I would answer, yeah, it did. It did indeed, right? Black candle gap down, boom, there's the retest. Here's the failure. Here's another retest. Here's the failure. Here's another retest. Here's the failure. Good, good money making opportunities on Twitter. So here's my thought. If the stock gaps down to here, let's say this cost $36, is that a gap and go, yes or no? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So white candle and it gaps down and it clears this short-term support. However, it does not clear the long-term support. You guys see that? $35, and let's zoom out here for just a little bit. $35 is a very, very strong um, level. See, boom, 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 boom. So if Twitter gaps down to here, I'd be a little bit more patient expecting possibly a bounce. And if it doesn't bounce, then maybe trading it bearish. However, if Twitter tomorrow gaps below 34.24, you can pretty much say goodbye to Twitter for another, I don't know, 10, 20% it would very, very, very likely get down to at least 30 and then probably a little bit lower because at that point, anyone, anyone who bought here would be trapped and losing money. Anyone who bought at any time, right? After June, 2014, so anyone up in here, if anyone bought in this general area, they'd also be losing money because it would be lower than it's ever been before since June of 2014. So we can pretty much rest assured that uh, there's gonna be some people who did the same trade as I did, right? Buy off the $35 price, and if it gaps down below there, which it very well might, I don't know, but if it does, it's gonna be pretty bearish. I am calling, and I think that Amazon, uh, that Twitter's gonna gap up. That's what I think. I think it's gonna gap up. So if it gaps up, ladies and gentlemen, will it be a retest gap, yes or no? And the answer is yes, it will be. So what I'm expecting is I'm expecting it to gap, trade down in the morning, and then bounce. And that will give us a buying opportunity. That's just my expectations. I don't know for sure if that's going to happen, but that's kind of my goal. Now, I will say this. Notice that 44.61 is a resistance price, and it's also a prior gap. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think? If Twitter was to open at, at 44 or 64 and some change, do you think people who bought in here will sell to take a profit? Yes or no? I would say, yeah. Why wouldn't they, right? They're up about another 10% if they bought, especially if they bought the prior day, which was you know today. So if it gaps up, my thought is, yeah, people are going to be selling. So this is a retest gap. So buy the bounce, depending on how big the candle is, of course. You know, if it's just this giant bearish candle like that, I probably won't be super excited about, you know, buying the bounce. But, you know, if we gap up to here, we trade down a little bit, then we start to bounce, you know, awesome. So that's my analysis on Twitter um, and on the trading floor in the last 15 minutes of the day, we do look at gaps um, for the next day. And that's exactly what I'm, that's kind of what I'm thinking, right? So that's my trading plan for Twitter. Um, Amazon was the, the other call that we made, pretty, pretty good call as far as the retest gap. And if you ever wanna see any of my prior charts, my prior analysis, hop over to tradingview.com and follow us. Uh, you can also search this if you are watching YouTube right now. You can come over to YouTube and search how to follow real life trading on TradingView. And if I ever post a chart or post a strategy or post some analysis, you'll be able to get an email uh, with that information. That is a totally free thing. So, you know, if you want to follow uh, myself and my company on TradingView, you know, watch that video and find out how. It's really, really beneficial. But anyway, uh, let's just talk about this really quickly for a second. This gap right here, boom, boom. What type of gap was that? That was a retest gap, okay? Let's go back to the five minute candle. It's gonna take us a little bit of time to get there. Boom, boom, boom. Here's the five minute on Amazon. And ladies and gentlemen, did Amazon on that very, very powerful gap up, did it retest just a few days ago? And the answer is, not only did it retest, it was majestic. Here's the people selling for a profit. Uh, here's the buy, here's the sell, here's the money. Okay, so for your swing trades then at that point, you would switch to the hourly chart, right? You're still saying, okay, I expect the um, retest. All right, well, you got a really, really good retest right here. Stock came down, bounce, retest. There's retest number two. Here's retest number three. And here's my current trading plan on Amazon that you guys can kind of see and you can see how it plays out. My thought is I'm waiting for Amazon to continue to retest and rest and trade sideways a little bit something like this, then I think it's gonna break out above 368.17, trade sideways a little bit later, and then break out to the ultimate target of 407. And I have a protective put to mitigate my losses at 355.20 if we go below there, and I have a stop at 346.01 where I would exit my long position, continue to hold on to my protective put, and this is where I would exit my protective put at 336, hoping then at that point, boom, boom, boom. Hoping for that, hoping it would be a retest of the gap. And ladies and gentlemen, as simplistic as it sounds, that's really about it. That's gaps for you. And it is all about, are people making money? Are people losing money? Are they terrified? Are they shocked? Are they trapped? All those emotions, they feel, people feel, because people are what causes the stock to move in one direction or another because they are buying it or selling it. So regardless of what stock you're looking at, I prefer stocks that have good volume and that have some you know, movement to them. So something over $10 or over $5, something with some consistency. Uh, you can actively and consistently trade you know, Am Apple, Amazon, Facebook, LinkedIn, Go GoPro, Alibaba, um, El Pollo Loco. You can, you can actively trade well-named stocks. It doesn't have to be some random penny stock. In fact, I dis discourage you guys Discourage, is that a word? Discourage you guys from ever investing in penny stocks. It's, you might as well just go out and buy a lottery ticket. It's the exact same probabilities of working out. But on Amazon specifically, uh, this is my trading plan. If it trades sideways another you know, three or four days, uh, maybe even longer, I think that's just stock market mana at this point. And uh, if we do in fact trigger, I would be more bullish than bearish, trade in the direction of the gap, and it'll be interesting to see how in fact it plays out on Amazon. We do have a bull put spread down here at 315, 310 bull put. Uh, so bottom line, if you're not super familiar with credit spreads, I do offer credit spreads teaching for free at reallifetrain.com under the mastery section. But 315, 310, uh, I'll make it simple if you are a beginner trader. If Amazon does not go below 315, we're gonna make um, 
about nine to eight percent return on that particular spread in about two weeks. Not too shabby at all, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this gap. If you want to call this the end all be all video for gaps, um, you're more than welcome to. I mean, there's going to be all kinds of schools of thought out there. But take it from me, you know, I've been professionally trading the market for years now, and all I know is in trading, there's one thing to do, and that is create your trading plan and have the discipline to follow it. And if you do that, ladies and gentlemen, you can become a real life trader. And that is what real life trading is all about merging life, realistic expectations, and discipline together so that we can enrich the lives of people from all over the world. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. You are absolutely phenomenal. Feel free to share it with your friends or other fellow traders. It is free and we will always continue to be free. All of our information and our education that I teach will be entirely free. Guys, have a great afternoon, a great evening, a great night, a great day, a great week, a great weekend. And remember, love life, live life, and trade it. I'll see you in the next video.